Hello, everybody. Welcome to Upsolver. Today, I'm going to do an end-to-end -end demo on Upsolver and its features. So Upsolver is a no-code data lake engineering platform for agile cloud analytics. What it does is that it transforms raw data into queryable data for any analytics engine at scale in real time. Being open is very important for Upsolver. We offer various data sources such as streaming, databases, and object storage. The data gets persistent in the data lake, and we do transformation on top of the data lake. So instead of transforming your data in the data warehouse, which can be very costly, all the transformation is in open data formats and is done in the data lake. AppSolver provides many different data sources that's built into the product so that you don't need to build any data sources yourself. The idea is to be able to ingest data from various different sources to your data lake very easily. For a full list of the data sources, I'm going to provide it in a link below. Regardless of what your data source may be, the architecture is going to be very similar where Upsolver pulls various data from very different sources and then use S3 to be your data lake. The reason we do this is because transforming data on S3 is going to be much cheaper than loading it into a data warehouse and then transform it there. This particular data source that you're seeing here is a sample data of cluster resource utilization, such as uh, what's the CPU usage and what's the available, etc. So that this particular data gives you some idea on how your cluster is performing from a resource perspective. Another thing to keep in mind is that Absolver supports all data formats. So whether if you have Avro or Parquet or JSON or CSV or whatever you may have, Absolver takes those data and then parses them automatically. So what you see here is a schema on read. The left-hand side, you'll see a tree are the fields that's being parsed as you pull in the data. And if your data source changes and more data is being added, you will see them reflected here as well. The idea is to make data discovery and data ingestion super easy for you, so you don't need to do any of the stuff manually. As you can see, the statistics are parsed out as well, so that you can see uh, when the data was first seen, when the data was last seen, also the density of this particular field and some of the top values as well. And on the bottom, it will see a sample data of what it looks like uh, during this period of time. And as the data is being ingested, I can see a uh, sample, parse the error lineage, and also monitor how the data ingestion is going, uh, whether the cluster utilization looks healthy, and also whether there are any delays uh, to my ingestion as well. Now that we see how easy it is to ingest and the parse some data into your data lake and also do the data discovery on top of it, we can now use Upsolver to do some transformations to manipulate your data so that it's most fitting for any data analytics that you want to perform on your data lake. For this particular demo, we're going to transform some data and output to AWS Athena. By using Upsolver, you can do a fan-in or fan-out architecture where your data output could be mapped to multiple data sources, and also you can replicate the same exact data into multiple data outputs. So for this example, I'm just going to use a Google Analytics session data and call the output may test. So here is where the most upsolver magic happens. Um, as you can see on the left, there are fields from your data sources that you can map to your data outputs by clicking on the little plus sign next to each field. You can either add them one by one or you can add them in batches. Also, Absolver deals with nested data very well. So if you want to flatten your data from a nested data structure, you can do that very easily here as well. Absolver provides a hybrid view of SQL and also the UI as well. So from here, if I try to change my column name and add aggregations, etc., it will be reflected in the SQL view automatically. Now let's try to perform a simple transformation by clicking on Add Calculated View. And what you see here is over 200 built-in transformation functions right out of the box so that you don't need to write any of this stuff yourself. For this example, we're going to choose the to date function. And what this to date function is converting the date field to a human readable field. 
and I can click on Preview to see the before and after before saving the transformation. Also, keep in mind that these functions are, are extendable by Python, or you can use PMML for machine learning capabilities. So we're only scratching the surface of what Upsolver can do as far as transformation from this demo. Just to make sure that the transformation worked correctly, I can click on Preview and scroll all the way to the right to make sure that everything shows up under Event Date correctly. Now let's move back to the SQL view. And uh, everything that you have done on the UI is reflected here in the SQL. So for example, we did the two day function, as you can see that is um, reflected here in the SQL statement as well. The set statement specifically is to make sure that your SQL is very easy to compose and uh, well put together um, to avoid any kind of a convoluted sub select that you need to do. The select statement allows me to work with the fields in the transformation. Uh, keep in mind that, again, everything that you do here, you can fully do it on the UI if you feel more comfortable with the UI. I can use where clause to filter my data as well. This is especially useful for larger data set. So I can choose a subset of the data that I really need to send it to my data warehouse or search engines. I can also easily add aggregation to my data set. So I'm going to add a global count to my data set in this example. But there are many built in aggregations that I can use. Uh, for example, any kind of a minimum, maximum type of functions, uh, I can just click on it and then it's going to calculate all of that over the set of my data without having to write complex code. Managing upsource is also very easy with Upsolver. So if you want to do upsource into your target, whether it's S3 or Athena or Snowflake, whatever it may be, all you have to do is click on Manage Upsource and then choose the key that you want to use for upsorting. If you're looking for a way to joining two data sources or data streams together, or if you're looking for a way to join current data with historical data, Upsolver makes it very easy. So you can just click on Add Lookup from the UI, or you can use the Join clause in the SQL statement as well. Now, if I flip over to the SQL view, I can see that the lookup we just performed on the UI is translated into a left join between the Google Analytics session data and the Google Analytics user profile data. Now, remember earlier that we performed a upsert in the UI, and this is where you see in Upsolver where it says replace on duplicate. That means it's performing a upsert to your target Athena table so anytime if there's a duplicated record, it's going to be updated. Upsolver also makes optimization on your data lake very easy. So something like partitions, it's very easy to manage partitions for your data lake data. For example, you can choose the field that you want to partition on and choose how you're going to partition the data. And this is going to drastically help your data access time by decrease the amount of data you're going to scan with your SQL engine. Now we have performed some basic transformations. Uh, we can go ahead and start writing the data to Athena table. So by clicking on run, I can define all of my run parameters, such as the S3 storage location connection to Athena and also database name and table name in my Athena environment. Keep in mind that Upsolver does all the data orchestration and the governance automatically in the background so that you don't need another third party tool to manage all of this. From here, I can define the cluster that I want to run this workload on. Also, I can define the time frame that I want to load the data from so that either I can run all of my historical data and by leaving the ending at as never that means it's a continuous stream which means any new data appears is going to be automatically loaded to your table I can also choose from now or I can choose a specific time frame that I want to load the data from so this is up to you based on your use case. Now that you can see that Upsolver provides streaming capability what that means is that with a lot of streaming data um, often it's going to create a lot of small files on your S3. So Upsolver does compaction in the background to ensure that these files are, are compacted in a way that's going to be very performant for your query engine. It also allows you to replay the data whenever it's needed. Now we can deploy this and the data is starting to write to the Athena table. 
I can click on the progress bar to make sure that it's making good progress. If you want to fan out this data architecture to a separate data output, it's also incredibly easy. Just click on duplicate and then choose the data output that you want to output to. For this example, we're just going to output the exact same data to Snowflake. Now let's compare the performance between Upsolver optimized data versus not optimized data. The optimized data takes 24 seconds versus the non-optimized data takes 5 minutes. Thank you for watching this demo. See you next time.